So it turns out that deep neural networks, which are more sophisticated neural networks that are used in things like Google Search or Google Translate, um, that sort of thing, uh, image recognition, are actually quite easily fooled. So um, again, we don't need to go into the details of how we do this, but you can see that um, these are all pictures that have been generated through a process called evolutionary algorithms and they get neural networks to recognize these random images as all sorts of animals. So king penguins, jackfruit, so animals and plants and other objects, armadillos, lesser panda, etc. And clearly those aren't the things, but the machine learning models think they are. So when we're looking at attacks, we can look at adversarial inputs. This is a non-visible alteration of an image that causes the neural network to misclassify it. The exact perturbation depends on whether the attacker has access to the underlying neural network model and, in fact, the data that was used to train it. Um, and the vulnerability has received an awful lot of attention from researchers, basically because it's easy to do. You can get uh, um, results pretty quickly. Um, and not only can you generate these uh, adversarial inputs, but a lot of work is doing going into how can you create neural networks that can actually defend against these types of attacks. So the famous example, other than the tabby cat and guacamole, is taking a panda, and um, one of my favorite animals, and um, applying a um, an epsilon, and sort of an error to it, with a little bit of random noise, and it recognizes the panda with 57.7% confidence, um, and then it produces an image which is identical to the original image from a human perspective, but it's now recognized as a gibbon with 99.3% confidence. The interesting thing about this noise is that it's done in such a way as to make the classifier more accurate. And in fact, there is another field of research that one of the researchers here at UWA, um, Camilo Pedano is doing, which is um, uh, um, in fact, there is another field of research that a researcher here in our department is doing where you can actually use this to make classifiers um, essentially recognize the object more accurately. It's introducing robustness into the image, it's called, and uh, Camillo's work has uh, been published on this. So this is what a gibbon looks like, just in case. And so you can see why uh, potentially a panda could be confused as a gibbon. But uh, take it from me, I've seen pandas in the wild and uh, um, they don't look like gibbons. So there's a general black box problem. Um, if a deep neural network is not interpretable, as in we don't know how it works, then we don't know if it's biased. And this is a, uh, an, a special concern when the bias concerns sensitive features, like if it's trying to recognize um, a picture and it confuses people based on race or gender and that's quite common um, and it's not explainable so if a company or individual asks how a particular decision was made it's not possible to do so and we don't know if it's working as expected and this is very important when you consider that thing decisions like you know whether people uh, are getting interviewed or not are based on machine learning uh, assessments of CVs or whether people should be allowed out of jail, so bail decisions, uh, prosecution, uh, sentencing is being based on decisions that can be potentially biased using biased algorithms. So it's so an important consideration in artificial intelligence generally, but also concerns us in cybersecurity. So often researchers have no access to the details of the algorithm or training data. So you can check the model without these things. You can do reverse engineering, um, but this is a problem with black box models. When we're looking at the entire attack service and vulnerabilities, uh, we can look at the entire pipeline and we can see the types of attacks that we've got. So there's data acquisition. We can poison this. So essentially what we're doing is um, you know, essentially creating a way in which the 
images that are being created, for example, or captured are not correct. So you can alter what um, something is seeing. And that's important in things like autonomous cars, where you can alter uh, images and think that uh, the car thinks it's seeing a stop sign, for example, um, or a you know a speed limit sign when in fact it's a stop sign. We can poison the training data, so we can feed in images with wrongly classified labels, for example, and we can skew skew the model that way. We can put back doors into models themselves so that when certain actions happen, the model will come out with a particular prediction or decision, um, which can then do certain, take certain actions. And that's uh, obviously very dangerous. We can poison the training and retraining. And we saw with the Microsoft Tay chatbot um, how that actually worked. And then we can look at how when it's at the testing time, the prediction time, we can add adversarial inputs, we can steal data, so we can reverse engineer. Uh, for example, if you um, basically want to check uh, what faces were used in a training model, uh, it's possible to do that through certain facial recognition algorithms, uh, which is obviously a problem if you're trying to preserve the uh, privacy of the people that whose images were used for the training. In assessing the risk um, of a machine learning system and an attack on that, it really depends in part on the motivation of the attacker, um, also what knowledge the, uh, the attacker had of the model, so whether it was white, gray or black box, um, and that doesn't necessarily reflect the complexity of the attack, skill required, to develop that level of access to the pipeline and the type of attack, you know, things like poisoning or evasion. And that helps us evade, you know, essentially identify potential threat actors and the risks involved. Here's another case, though, that we haven't covered before, which is tampering with medical images, potentially much and very much more serious. So here are some images of uh, retinas, there's retinal scans that are being used to look for signs of things like diabetic retinopathy, which is a condition that can lead to serious complications for eyesight. And the uh, point of this is to say whether there is a retinopathy or not. And here, for example, you're saying that here there's a, a negative and a positive image. But after an adversarial input on this, you can get it to misclassify and give you a false positive and a false negative here. So it wrongly misclassifies these two images. And this is much more plausible. In fact, um, it's not necessarily in terms of changing a diagnosis to alter the outcomes of treatment that's a concern, but things like Medicare fraud, where you're claiming based on the number of images that you are recognizing and processing and you can essentially alter these images in ways that wouldn't be perceptible. You can't tell that they've been tampered with, but the classifier wouldn't wrongly classify the images. So who the threat actors could be in this situation? Well, technicians, doctors, medical specialists, ophthalmologists who might uh, be able to, to do this. Uh, to change the diagnosis based on an image analysis. Let's say, for example, the doctor um, is being done from malpractice and, you know, based on an image that they misclassified um, as being negative when in fact it was positive, and they could tamper it to make it uh, appear negative. Now, when there's a human in the loop, um, then that's much harder because then you get a second human opinion. And this is one of the outcomes of all of this is that it's still necessary to have humans in to make decisions when you have artificial intelligence. So the target is the medical image analysis by neural network, and the action is perturb the image to cause the misclassification. The skills required, well, they're high in that you need to know the machine learning model, but uh, we actually can show that um, there are general tools that are available that can do that for you. Um, so, you, But you do need access to the image, access to the model being used as either a white or black box. 
So the result of that is misclassification, change of diagnosis, and um, as I said, that has a huge effect on potentially the treatment of the patient and their eventual health or defrauding health payment agencies. And the threat type is integrity. So the threat risk, threat actors don't need to be particularly sophisticated, can be hard to detect, can use AI to create sophisticated attacks. So we can use AI itself to do this. There is, um, There are other ways of doing this um, that are probably simpler by direct manipulation, changing a value in a red medical record, for example, or substitution of the image, um, hoping that you're never going to actually be found out. Um, and the skills needed are, are potentially high. You have to understand what you're doing, even using other tools. Um, but mitigation can be straightforward. Um, you could put digital signatures on all the images so that you can tell if they've been tampered with um, and then they can be automatically detected in that way. Um, that assumes that you've got something else that's controlling the hashing of that image. So there are ways it's not perfect. There are a whole range of different other attacks that are AI based, based so fooling spam detections, phishing malware, network intrusion and threats. Um, attacks on autonomous cars and um, plenty of videos on YouTube how autonomous cars can be fooled um, uh, with, uh, especially with AI driving assistance um, and how they fool themselves in some of the accidents that Teslas have been involved in where they've misread um, or misinterpreted um, images or objects as being harmless when in fact it was a truck. Uh, medical decision support systems and things like privacy attacks, so inference attacks, uh, extraction of personally identifiable information from models, and stealing the model itself, which is a problem. So you can protect the entire system, limit access to detailed information of the model, limit the number of queries, and this is one way of limiting uh, essentially black box testing, where you just fire a whole range of queries to it and get it to um, misclassify or seeing how it classifies objects. Uh, training the model with adversarial inputs, which is still today one of the most effective defenses. In fact, some would argue the only defense against adversarial images. Uh, modification of the inputs to filter out perturbations. Um, as I said, don't rely solely on AI. Um, have a human in the loop. 